Hi Stuart, uh, very warm welcome back to East End Park. It must have been a few years since you last visited. Yeah, um, 2010 was the last time I was here actually. Right. Um, yeah, um, no, it wasn't a game. Right, but, so um, yeah, yeah, I was, I was with uh, one of the board members, um, Bill Bresby, and he, he kind of showed me around. Because uh, there's been quite a lot of change since, since I played. You see a big difference yeah, in the place, yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Um, you began your career with Montrose, your professional career, in 1978 as an 18 year old. Um, do you remember your time then and uh, were there any characters in your team? Yeah, not so much characters, but just coming into the game as a, as a young player, you know, and, and finding your way. Um, Bobby Livingston was probably one that uh, I don't know, uh, I don't think he really played anywhere else other than Montrose, but he then became manager there, yeah. and he was quite an influence uh, on me at that time. Um, Bobby, well, 18 year old, I suppose. You yeah, had to yeah, and Bobby was yeah. towards the end of his career playing wise as well, and you know, he went on to, to manage the team that I played for as well. Probably Bobby, really. And against, with St Johnston, then you played. Yeah, against St the Johnston. Yeah, yeah. I'd, uh, unfortunately, I have one recollection um, that the, the end of the last game of the season. I'm pretty sure that uh, I think it was six one St Johnston. I think um, we got promoted, and unfortunately, the bars went down that year. I think uh, from the old first division. So that might have been the start of the the, um, the, the sort of the bit of a decline the club had then in the. 80s. Um, well, we've been a club that's been going up and down. Yeah, a little, you know, yeah, a little bit. And, and actually, when you think about the timelines, that, that would probably be correct because we probably went second division, then third division, mm -hmm. probably at the time, and then by the time they battled back up, I was able to come and help. Uh, after that, you went, you had a couple of seasons at Dundee United, um, and in the first season there, you helped uh, the Arabs in their great cup run, uh, scoring in a semi final against Aberdeen. Uh, lots of people have described it as one of the hardest shots they've ever seen. Uh, you also scored the final against Celtic. Do you yeah. remember these two yeah. games specifically? Yeah, yeah. Um, in particular, probably the semi final, because we won that game as opposed to the final, which we lost. Mm -hmm. um, and, and obviously, scoring, I'm, I'm from Aberdeen originally, so scoring uh, against them to, to knock them out of the cup was uh, quite gratifying, really. And uh, it's one of the, my few goals that's on YouTube and it gets dragged out now and then when we when, uh, get together with a few mates in Australia, you know. Mm -hmm. Good. Um, then you went to Hibs next, 1986. Um, you featured in Graham Souness' first game as a player, manager of Rangers. Uh, some folks say that Souness' sending off was triggered by your initial challenge on him. Um, do you remember much of the goings on in that game? Yeah, well again, that, they could view that on YouTube as well. So uh, um, yeah, I remember actually scored that day as well. And uh, we won 2-1. As I say, it was his first game here and there's a, a, quite a big um, build up and, and not hype around him taking over that position, you know. And um, yeah, he was he was coming out of defence type of thing, and I, I somehow managed to get ahead of steam up and and just sort of come come in from the side. It was never tackled from behind, but he was certainly surprised. And uh, yeah, he jumped up and um, took revenge on George McCluskey, which was unlucky for George because he ended up with about eight stitches in his knee. Yeah. Uh, typical Graham through his challenge, you know. And, uh, and uh, Graham saw red, and every other player on the day got booked. Um, Alan Ruff, being the exception, typical uh, Alan Ruff, he decided everyone else had, a, had got involved in a melee in the middle of the. So everybody field. was booked. Everyone, 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 everyone got booked. But what happened? You know, it was at a later date the bookings were issued um, because the referee obviously didn't know what was going on, but the television cameras caught quite a lot of the, the stuff that was going on. Mm -hmm. But uh, Ruffy thought it was a lot safer down his end with the goal. Just, just keep away from it. Just left. He was the man on the field with gloves on, but he didn't want to get involved, you know, like Ruffy. Oh, so and, welcome uh, to Scottish football for, for, for Graham, yeah, managing well, it. That was his first game he ever yeah. played in, in, in um, Scotland. Your uh, time at Hibs was quite short. You only made around a dozen appearances for Hibs. But, and before the season was out, you signed for the Pars. What yeah. brought about that quick turnaround? Yeah, uh, actually, I picked up a very serious injury. Uh, uh, Call it the symphysis pubis now, and uh, it's basically like a, a little bit of a displacement of the pelvis. Um, and during that time, when I was you know out injured, um, the managers changed, and Alec Miller um, took, got a role there at Hibs. And Alec came in with very strong ideas, and you know, although I wasn't even playing at the time, and he made it very clear very quickly that uh, I wasn't going to be involved. And right, so you weren't part of his thoughts no, for the future? No, even if I was fit, you know, I, I, I wasn't even playing and then I, I managed to get myself back towards the end of the season to some kind of level of fitness and uh, fortunately for me, uh, big Jim Leishman came calling and uh, it, 
was one of the best moves I ever made, to be honest. Very good. Um, were you aware of the powers, the players, um, the type of team they were at the time? Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, they obviously they were rising back through the ranks there and they were um, right on the verge, uh, the cusp of, of promotion at the time. I think in, in that time, the, um, it was about maybe five, six weeks to go this season, they, they would put a, a transfer embargo and then they wouldn't allow any movement of players. Um, and so he signed me just before that deadline. So there was always a little bit of a rush. Um, it was about four or five games to go, um, I think. And um, so I signed just before the promotion season there. It, it was a funny feeling actually, because I didn't have a great deal to do with the promotion in terms of where they were in the league. I did play the day that we got promoted out here, but the euphoria and stuff that was generated, I didn't really, um, Feel it if you know that. I mean, it was difficult. Yeah, 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 because I'd only been at the club a very short time. And you were part of the team though that beat Rangers two nothing in the cup. But you stayed. Was that been the following following year? I think it was the following year. Yeah, that was uh, that was again the Graham Souness era, and uh, it was very satisfying. Uh, John Watson scored one, and Mark Smith um, somehow. There's a typical Mark Smith cross come short, it could have gone so anywhere. Say that. Was it could, a cross have gone <laughs> well, you could ask him, he wouldn't know. It, uh, <laughs> it, uh, yeah, it just it, it sailed over uh, Chris Wood's head and goal and, and it set us off. And then John Brown got set off just before half time. And uh, so Rangers played the second half with 10 men. And, uh, yeah, we ended up comfortable winners that day. Do you think Rangers were a good team under Sinus? Do you think he was a good manager for them? Oh, he turned Scottish football around at that time. As soon as um, he, he brought in half the England team, you know, he was given the the, tick, the the cash to do it, and he brought in Chris Woods, Trevor Stephen, Gary Stephen, uh, Terry Butcher, um, Mark Hately. Do you feel that changed Scottish football at that time? Oh no, doubt. well, it changed the whole face of Scottish football to how it is now. I mm -hmm. think, you know, um, but you know, the club started to look straight away then to to European. Um, Avenues of signing players and stuff, and, and not necessarily for the goodness of the game here. You, know? you mentioned it was Jim Leishman that um, signed you to the Pars. Um, how much of an influence were Jim's pre match talks and poems and yeah. ramblings? Yeah. I, I might uh, bring one up a bit later on, I can't really say it here at this, <laughs> this present time on camera, I wouldn't be prepared to do that. But uh, no, Jim was known as, as a, a, a real uh, character in the dressing room, you know, and he. he he was very smart, Jim, because he, he knew what his strengths were, and he absolutely used that to the best of his ability. He knew that he, 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 you know, in terms of the understanding of the game and and the, you know the machinations of who should be doing this and this and that. He left that to, the, to Dick Campbell, I think it was at the time, and then latterly Ian and Rowe. Um, so I took that role on. Um, but Jim, for a, um, a player to look at, as, as to, to him as a leader, uh, it was he, you know it was very very strong and. and wasn't afraid to make decisions. Right, so he was inspirational. Very much so. Very much so. Yeah, yeah. So all the time you were here, you were saying we were up, we were down. Um, a bit of a yo-yo club. Mm. Do you? What kind of memories is there? If you one year you're up, the next year you're back down, and things. I mean, that must be. Yeah, uh, well, difficult. It, it, it was well. That, that's basically it was you know my, my sort of two two and a bit years here, and we the club got promotion, and the following year we went up there. And uh, this is one of the gyms I can't tell you actually because we went we went to uh, Aberdeen, uh, Aberdeen and we played Hibs out here uh, the first game that, that was a three-all draw and uh, was, I remember that day actually very well um, and I think the following game we won I can't remember who that was against but then obviously we were sitting on four, four points and we were second or third in the league. And Jim turned around and said, "Well, that's it, fellas. We've got a European place sorted out now. We can only throw it away." You know. <laughs> <laughs> Who do you remember most? Well, um, Bobby Smith. Um, uh, he arrived here through Hibs as well. Um, Bobby played here for then the same couple of years, I think, that I did. You know. Um, unfortunately, he passed a few years back um, with, with cancer. Unfortunately. Um, but Bobby was a great character in the dressing room, you know, and he had lots of experience as well. He'd been at Leicester City, um, he played the Hibs before he went to Leicester City and then came back there. And, um, you know, and actually one of the backroom staff, um, who also passed quite recently, uh, is Joe Nelson. Uh, Joe was just a second, a kit man, second to none. 
uh, Kitman dog's body, he'd do anything for any, anyone, you know. And, and he'd sold it right to the end. I'd imagine, he, imagine he would have done, I'd imagine he would have done, he, he'd be a great loss to any club, and uh, mm. he was always on uh, stuck in my mind. So then, uh, 89, 90 season, at the end of, at the start of the season, you moved to Dundee. Yeah. Um, we had Stuart Rapper to come in, and ironically, the opening game of the league season brought Dundee to East End Park. What sort of reception? Do you remember the reception you got? I, I, it wasn't too bad. It wasn't. I, it got worse because I actually do, I do remember <laughs> school. <laughs> and that, that at that time that that um, kept up a bit of a tradition that I had. Every club I went to, every time I, I played a debut, I, I scored in my first game. And um, I said, the film might have been the only club I didn't do that with. Um, I can't remember if I did or not. Anyway. Um, Anyway, I'm sure you know, the Irons uh, yeah. scored against you. So yeah, I think you won two one. Yeah, I think one two one. That's right. And, and you know, I, I moved on to Dundee, but it was a. No, I, I, to be fair, the Dunfermline supporters, I think they were, they were pretty fair to me. And then you moved to Australia. It seems quite a change. Uh, twenty years ago. Since twenty you years. Went. Yeah, twenty years ago. And what uh, was the attraction? What made you decide to have such a change? Well, my wife's family had moved out there. Um, over a number of years, and her mother and father were there, her brother and sister were also there, and it was basically an opportunity. She, you know, was keen to, to give it a go. And um, once I'd really finished uh, playing football to a, a reasonable standard, um, I thought, well, let's go and have a look. You know, um, why wouldn't you? So um, that wasn't part of your playing career when no. you went into management. Initially. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, when I got there. Um, Actually, I did play for a couple of clubs, but um, it was purely just to, to get known and, and, and get, make some friends in the area, that type of thing. You know, and what did you find the standard of football was? It wasn't too bad. It wasn't too bad. Uh, Australians have got a very high level of fitness and, and you know, they're always very competitive in everything they do, you know. Um, and there's big ethnic groups out there, you know, Italians, um, Macedonians, Croatians, there's big communities. We've all formed football clubs over the years, you know, so... Um, the standard was reasonable, you know. Um, do you still keep up with Scottish football while you're there? Do you watch out for uh, any of your clubs? A little bit. I, I, not, I'm not one that really watches a lot of football, to be honest. Um, this, this, I, I'm coming um, game, to a film game tonight. And it's my second game in four days, which is unheard of for me. Because <laughs> uh, I was at the Aberdeen Dundee, uh, Dundee game on Saturday. And I don't really, really follow it. I mean, what you can do if you want to, you know, but um, yeah, I, I, always, I always see something somewhere, you know, I've always got an interest, but not not religiously, you know, there's too, too much else going on really, you know. So. Do you still feel Scottish, or are you more Australian now? Would oh, you no, I'm Scottish. Are you? Oh, yeah, yeah, I'm home. See, that's when I say I'm leaving so Australia. Home I'm today. home, yeah, I'm <laughs> home. That's good. Yeah. Well, you've, you've certainly had a positive contribution to a few clubs throughout mm. your uh, career, both here and in Australia, and as a manager coach, who would you say you learned most from and who has influenced you most in your career? I'd go back to Alec Rennie at St Johnston to be honest. Um, he, he was from the Dun United School of Jim McLean and um, he was manager at St Johnston and signed me uh, for that initial period that really sort of kick-started my career I would say, you know, I mean, I've been minimum throws for three or two, three years or whatever it was and, and needed to then move on, you know, I mean, the throws are a, a good, tidy, small club, but there's got to be something, if you're going to improve, you've got to move on, Alex signed me, uh, and I learned, I'm sure I learned quite a lot under Alec, you know, uh, and then, I suppose, then Dundee United, you've got to look at, um, not just Jim McLean's contribution, but more Walter Smith and Gordon Wallace, you know, I thought they, the backroom staff there, well, they knew um, what Jim was like and, and how to get the best out of the players, uh, you know, to uh, balance, the, uh, you know, how, how Jim McLean was, you know. Mm -hmm. Well, Stuart, on behalf of everybody here at East End Park, I'd like to thank you for taking the time to come and speak to us and share your memories. I just hope you have a great game tonight and a safe journey home when the time comes, or a safe journey back to Australia yeah, that's right. when the time comes. Yeah, that's right, that's right. Thank yeah, you very much. Well, thank you, sir.